The support role is arguably the most critical role in 2042. They provide ammo, health and revives in order to keep your team going. In this video, I hope to break down the role, the specialists and provide some valuable tips in order for you to be the absolute best support that you can be. If by the end of this, you aren't getting messages like this, then I have failed. The key to being a good support player is being aware of your teammates around you at all times. You need to get into the habit of constantly looking in their direction to make sure that they're all stocked up and alive. If you find this hard to do at first, you can just focus on a few members of your squad. Keep close to them and make sure that if they go down, you clear the area and res them. As a support class, you have the defibrillator tool. I shouldn't really have to explain what the defib is used for, but for those who are new to the game, I guess I'll explain. The defibrillator is used to kill Dozer mains in the most embarrassing way. But seriously, the defib is used to revive friendly teammates. It can be used in two ways. The first is the easiest, and it's generally what I personally stick to, and that is to just run up to down players sporting this icon, hold the interact button on them, and after charging for a little, you'll automatically revive the player to full health. Alternatively, if you manually equip the defib, you can actually choose how much to charge it before the revive. You might ask why would I do that? It's similar to the previous method, but with more steps. Well, it can have two advantages. The first is that you can move and charge the paddles at the same time, whereas if you use the interact method mentioned, you'll generally have to stay pretty still. The other advantage is that you can instead choose to only charge it up a minimal amount in order to revive players faster, but they revive with a lower amount of health. This is perfect if you need to revive a lot of players really fast. You can also use the defib to kill enemy players as demonstrated previously, and it will kill them no matter how much you've charged them. You also have the choice of four equipment to take when you deploy. The med crate, the ammo crate, the smoke grenade launcher, and for some reason a claymore? The med crate is a deployable object that will make all players within its effect radius immediately begin to heal to full health. After a player has benefited from a heal, the crate cannot be reused by that player for 10 seconds, shown by this little timer icon, meaning that you can't just stand in the radius taking bullets to the face while being constantly healed. When you deploy the medic crate, you will have to wait 30 seconds in order to use another, and you can only have one deployed on the field at the same time. Deploying a second crate will make the first crate disappear. The ammo crate is similar to the med crate, except instead of blessing players with health, it will instead grant them ammo. It is important to highlight that this doesn't just give back players bullets for their primary and secondary weapons, but it will replenish rockets, grenades, equipment, anything that isn't a specialist specific ability it will replenish. So for example, ammo crates will not give out Liz missiles for a TGM, since this is a specialist specific ability but it will recover one of our AT mines, which are classed as equipment. Let's say you're playing as Crawford, who is an engineer. You're running an M5 rocket launcher, an underbarrel AP launcher, and smoke grenades, and you're completely out of everything. When you use an ammo crate, not only will you get back ammo for your primary and secondary weapon, you'll also get back one M5 rocket, one AP underbarrel grenade, and one smoke grenade, all through that one use. Similar to med crates, once a player uses the ammo crate, they cannot use it again for another 20 seconds. And you can only deploy one on the battlefield at a time every 30 seconds. The smoke grenade launcher shoots out a volley of three smoke grenades to create a wall of smoke. When you deploy with it, it comes with three shots. This can be a great tool to use to help you revive players or to give your team concealment while they move to objectives without a lot of cover. And finally the claymores. These are anti-personnel mines which you should deploy in high traffic areas in order to get kills. Once an enemy crosses the lasers, the mine will detonate a blast towards them. Usually this will kill in one, but you can also shoot them to detonate them preemptively. A quick thing to note is that the specialist Blasco will not detonate these due to her perk. In my opinion, there are only two pieces of equipment that support should run with the med crate and the ammo crate. 
The smoke grenade launcher sounds good on paper since smoke is an invaluable tool to players, especially those who are playing as support. But instead consider this. If you bring smoke grenades as your grenade choice, or an underbarrel smoke launcher and an ammo crate, you'll have unlimited smoke grenades at your disposal, instead of the three grenades which the launcher comes with, with the added benefit of also being able to replenish friendly supplies. Yes, the smoke from this launcher is much bigger, but in most cases the smoke from a smoke grenade or an underbarrel smoke grenade will be sufficient. As a great man once said, it's not the size that matters, it's how you use it. And the claymores? Well, you just shouldn't use the claymores with support. It's just a cheesy weapon that doesn't really fit the role's purpose. If you want to play with them, then I'd recommend playing Recon or Assault class, since they also have claymores as an equipment choice. But other players are expecting you, as a support player, to have ammo or health. I'm not really sure what DICE was thinking by allowing this to be a choice for the support role. Whichever you run, the med or the ammo crate will likely come down to which specialist you pick. So let's break down the three specialists that make up the support role, Irish, Angel and Falk. Falk is most people's go-to support, and for good reason. Her kit is perfect for supporting friendlies. With her S21 Surrett pistol, she can administer heals from a distance, which is an absolutely amazing tool for keeping your allies topped up and pushing. She starts with 12 shots as a standard, with a magazine of 6 in the pistol. The projectile is a dart, so it has some travel time, but thankfully it comes with some significant aim assist, so you only need to be slightly aiming at your target. Volk's Surrett pistol has a weird hitbox. So instead of holding the button to heal yourself, it's faster to just aim at the ground and run forward into the dot. This will heal you while avoiding the self-heal animation. You could also use this to kill Dozer through his shield, but I believe they recently patched it out. Even better than her Surrette pistol is her perk, which alone is a good enough reason to main her. With her perk Combat Surgeon, she can charge her defibrillators almost twice as fast as any other support. Reviving with defibs is already fast, but doubling this speed means you'll be resing people faster than players can usually kill them. Which means if you see a Falk going for the revive, they should absolutely be your top priority. Geneva Convention be damned. Since her kit is naturally fit for keeping your teammates healed, I see no reason that you should ever take the medkit with her. Instead, take the ammo crate and be a complete all-round support. Angel is in the opposite camp to Falk. Where her base kit is built around healing, Angel's is built around ammo distribution. Angel has the single best ability in the game to support engineers, but the game does a really bad job of explaining it which means most players don't even know how to use it. Dear Angel players, It has come to our attention that you do not know the power which you possess. When we request ammo, you throw your ammo pouches in our face like we are dogs begging for scraps. But ammo pouches are not what we need. We need rockets, we need grenades, for the masses of enemy armour are approaching and our launchers run dry. Please, Angel, I beseech thee, Learn to deploy your ammo airdrop and give us what we need to take back the battlefield. Sincerely, every engineer player ever. Angel has the loadout crate ability, which should really be broken down into two. The first is the supply bag. You spawn with three of these and they can be used to replenish primary and secondary weapons only. It does not replenish rockets, grenades or equipment, which generally means they're practically useless since 90% of the time, players will die before these weapons run out. His main ability is to drop a loadout crate, which has two amazing uses. The first is activated if the player interacts with it. It will replenish all ammo that is currently missing. This is so valuable, since it can fully restock an engineer in one go. Whereas doing the same with ammo crates would take forever, the second use of the loadout crate can be accessed if you hold the interact button. This gives you the option of changing your loadout on the fly. This is less useful in most situations, but it is still something that you can consider if you're in the need for it. Similar to the ammo crates, it does have a cooldown of around 30 seconds once you use it, 
but since it replenishes everything, you'll likely not need to use it for a while. To use the loadout crates drop function instead of the ammo packs, you first need to equip the ammo packs, then use the aim button. This will toggle a circle to appear, which you will use to highlight where you want the drop to go. Way too many players don't know about this, and it means that they're completely squandering Angel's main strength. I've lost count at the amount of times I've been an engineer up in Angel's face begging for ammo, only to be tossed a useless ammo pouch. I frequently see people on Reddit complaining that there should be ammo stations on each point so that players can reliably get ammo without needing to depend on other potentially brain dead players. To this I propose the following. Angels everywhere. Whenever you're capturing a point with your team, drop an airdrop. Once the fighting is over, your teammates will have the opportunity to use the crate to replenish anything they used up. You can only have one airdrop deployed at a time but the drop timer replenishes as soon as the original loadout crate hits the ground. So drop them frequently around your own points so that others can use these points as hubs to replenish their essentials. Bonus points if you also use this airdrop to kill camping snipers. Angel's perk is Trauma Specialist, which resupplies friendlies with primary and secondary ammo when you revive them. Given that you could do this manually by throwing an ammo pack once you revive them, it's kind of a garbage perk that you won't even notice most of the time. Since this kit is already set with ammo, I would probably recommend taking the med crate with Angel. Irish brings two valuable tools to the battlefield to his fortification system. His deployable shields and his APS-36 shootdown sentinels, known in the game as his trophy system. Upon spawning in, you'll have two of these to use, and they use the same count. So if you deploy one shield wall, you can only deploy one more shield wall or one APS sentinel. At least until you've replenished more of them by waiting 20 seconds. His walls are a great tool for giving you cover in vulnerable locations and for slowing down vehicles. You can deploy these very fast and being good with these can give you a massive advantage in firefights. They have a see-through glass on top which you can use to line up your shots ahead of time. I've had a lot of success using these with a shotgun. Enemies would push me while I was safely hiding behind my shield. Then I could line up my shot, quickly pop up and blow them away when they get too close before they can even react. The shields can be destroyed but they can take an absolute beating. His second deployable unit is the APS Sentinel. This will intercept rockets, missiles, grenades, and safely destroy them before they can reach their intended target. When the APS is ready to intercept, the unit will have a solid light. Once any of the targets get in range, it will immediately activate protection mode for 5 seconds. During this time, the lights will blink, and the unit will intercept all targets that get within its protection radius. After it is done with this mode, the light will turn off, indicating that the unit needs to cool down for 7.5 seconds and recharge. At this point the unit will not intercept anything until the light turns solid again. The colour of the light indicates whether the unit is friendly or enemy. Green is good, red is bad. Friendly APS units will not intercept friendly projectiles, so you can safely throw things through the friendly sentinel's defence field. This is a lot like the active protection system on tanks, albeit a little weaker since it doesn't intercept as much as the systems on vehicles. For example, the APS on vehicles will intercept tank rounds, but Irish's sentinels will not. In green here is a list of everything that will be intercepted during the interception mode. and in red, a list of everything that will not. I believe this list is mostly complete, but if there's anything that seems wrong, please leave me a comment so I can pin it so that others can be correctly informed. The sentinels are very valuable in choke points, in heavily explosive spammed areas, or around friendly vehicles who are getting peppered with rocket launcher fire. Just like the shields, they deploy immediately, and getting good at putting them down fast when you need them is a very valuable skill which separates the good Irish players from the bad. 
Irish's perk is Cash Point, which is a lot like Angel's perk except it's a little better. It replenishes gadget ammo whenever you revive a player. This is particularly good if you're reviving Boris or Crawford to give them more rockets for their launchers. Since Irish doesn't have an affinity for ammo or health like Falk or Angel, you could argue for taking either an ammo crate or a med crate. It really comes down to personal preference. Personally, I'll usually bring an ammo crate, just since I find them more useful. Now that we've covered specialists, I just wanted to chime in to weapon choice. Support gets the SMG proficiency, which means that you can switch to your SMG a little bit faster. Does this mean that you should only use SMGs with support? Absolutely not. This perk is so minor that it doesn't really make that much of a difference. Honestly, I'd recommend running whatever weapon you want, because you can usually supply yourself with ammo, so you never have to worry about running dry. I like playing with the BSVM or shotguns with this class because of this exact reason, since these weapons come with a low ammo count as standard. But I also mix it up often. Tailor your weapon choice for your gameplay style rather than what specialist class you're playing. Finally I want to provide some tips for you to keep in mind as you play support to help elevate you above the rest. Smoke grenades are the single best tool for any support player. Hell, I'll personally take them with every class, but they absolutely shine when used with support. I made an entire video on how smokes are the best grenades, so I'll keep it short. Being able to deploy a smoke on a downed friendly makes reviving so much safer. You can massively reduce the number of deaths that you have and increase the number of players that you revive, which in turn can keep pushes that would usually have been shut down going. I cannot stress this enough, not taking these is going to negatively affect your game. If you don't want to give up your grenade, you can also consider taking an underbarrel smoke launcher if you don't mind trading out a grip. However, this does come with the downside of you needing to reload it every time you use it. Smoke. Smoke. Every supply. Support drop available. Are you smoking yet? Keep yourself stocked up too. The worst feeling ever as a support is running to a downed friendly, hitting that throw grenade button and realising that you've got none left, and then being peppered full of infantry fire. Be sure that you're using ammo crates and ammo airdrops whenever you need them. With ammo crates in particular, I've gotten into the habit of throwing them right after a smoke revive, in order to immediately replace the smoke that I just used. This has the added benefit of also giving extra ammo to the guy I just revived. Most often, Crawford and Boris will be running either the M5 or the RPG. These weapons on spawn come with 3 and 2 rounds respectively. However, the player can carry an additional round, which means that you can normally use the ammo crate on these specialists and they are guaranteed to benefit from it. More so, these additional rounds give them the ability to solo everything other than the MAV with just their launchers alone. This one is simple. To maximise your benefit to the team, throw your crates towards groups of teammates where possible and watch those support points roll in. If you have a teammate who is getting in your way while staring at you or shooting you, it usually means that they want something from you. Most of the time this is ammo. Just because their low ammo indicator isn't showing doesn't mean that they don't have a need for it. Be sure to throw down a crate to help them out. As a support, you should be willing to go out of your way for revives. Now be reasonable, no one expects you to sprint all the way across the map, but anyone who is downed who you can quickly get to, you should. Naturally, if you don't know that the player who killed your teammate was dealt with, you should assume that they're still around. Clear the area the best you can so that you don't end up giving the bad guys two for the price of one. Keep an ear out for movement while you're reviving so that you can cancel the revive and fight back if necessary or pop a smoke to conceal your revive. Good players will frequently keep an eye on downed players when they suspect that an enemy support is around, since most of the time they'll go for the revive and be vulnerable. Again, I find myself praying that more players begin to use the spotting function in 2042, but in this case, you should be using it on your downed teammates. When you do this, it lets that player know that you're on the way, and that they should not rush back to the spawn screen. 
This is especially important when the player downed is not right at your feet, since a lot of players see that there are no medics within 10 meters and they immediately hit the give up button, or if you need to clear the area first, since as soon as they see that you're distracted, they assume that you have no intention of getting them for the revive. On the other side of this, if you're downed and you see the medic incoming message in the bottom left, then for the love of god, wait for them to get to you. They have every intention to get to you, they pinged you to let you know that they're on the way, just be a little patient. The time you think you're saving by rushing to the respawn screen will end up just being squandered on returning to where you were downed. The great thing about playing such a strong supportive role is that friendliness generally comes back around. I've consistently found that players I've revived in the past will prioritise reviving me. This usually leads to my KD ratio being significantly higher when I play such a role. I love playing support and I hope that this video has given you some things to consider to help you carry your team to victory. If you have any support tips of your own that I didn't cover in this video, please add them to the comments so that other players in this community can learn and become better. Thanks for watching all the way through. Please be sure to like the video and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Hope you have a wonderful day. See you on the battlefield.